Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the Pentium 4 521 Prescott era CPU. This processor was one of, if not the lowest clock, Prescott running at 2.8 GHz on a single core with hyperthreading. It is a socket 775 CPU running on an 800 MHz front side bus. The CPU features 1 MB of L2 cache, 64 bit instructions, and a TDP of 84 watts. Despite the Prescott CPUs being hot and power hungry for today, and the Athlon 64s basically eating their lunch, these were found in many OEM systems at the time. Today we're going to test it at stock speeds, and then we're going to overclock it and test it again in a few random games. We have it paired with a GTX 260, an ASUS P5N73-AM motherboard with 4GB of DDR2-800. In stock configuration, the RAM speed was set to the default to 667 MHz, and overclock we set it to 720. Okay, so on the left you can see the stock configuration, on the right the overclock configuration. The CPU went from 2.8 to 3.6 GHz no problem with a bit of a V-Core bump. Even managed to get a little overclock on the RAM as well. So for our comparison, we're going to start off with Cinebench R15, and you can tell how painfully slow this is going to be. Even the last few tiles here take forever to render. I mean, it's almost worse than watching paint dry. But now that it's finished, we can see we improved all the way up to, uh, we're basically matching a single core 1.8 GHz Sempron, so woohoo. Now that we can put that behind us, let's move on to some games. Alright, starting out with Doom 3. This game originally released in 2004. This is a BFG edition, which was remastered in 2012. Uh, the frame rate generally tends to be in the 50s, with dips into the 40s as things happen. Uh, this part of the game coming up here seems to uh, be one of the parts that drop the frame rate. There's a lot going on as this bridge comes down. So you can see as the bridge sections come down, the FPS also drops into the 20s. But once we overclock the CPU, the FPS only drops to the 50s, and then frame rates generally stay in the 60s and 70s. So if you had a P4 back in the day and you wanted to play Doom 3, you definitely would have uh, benefited greatly from an overclock. Alright, next up is Alan Wake's American Nightmare, and this is a game from 2012, and I decided to try it out since it's generally a pretty easy game to run. Not easy enough for a Pentium 4, however. In stock configuration, we never get out of single digits. And even once overclocked, I mean, we see FPS in the teens, but it drops again to single digits as soon as any action starts taking place. So at this point, I decided why not try uh, GTA 5 from 2013. It took forever, but it finally lowered the game after a while, but with a single digit slideshow frame rate. At least the FPS was pretty consistent. I mean, if you can say anything positive about it, which you really can. And things just went from bad to worse with the CPU overclocked. Uh, I thought it was looking better. Our FPS was in the teens, but there were constant lockups where I mean it would last for several seconds. So it, it went from being a slideshow to a PowerPoint presentation at that point. Alright, Darksiders 2 from 2012. I mean, the game ran, 
I mean, FPS was in the teens. Dropped to single digits with action on the screen. Once we gave it an overclock, you can see frame rates are generally in the 20s with the occasional 30. Uh, stutter gets pretty bad sometimes, but it was only occasionally, and it, it was more irritating than anything. I mean, overall, I mean, you could play the game on this thing overclocked. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. Alright, next up is the original Fear from 2005. I'm just running an in-game benchmark here, and we'll just overlay the screen so that you can see the difference. Uh, the overclock CPU on the right practically doubled the FPS. I mean, I should say it literally doubled it, and it smoothed the frame times out as well. So back in 2005, if you wanted to play Fear with a Pentium 4, you would have greatly benefited from an overclock. And here, you can really see the difference in the distribution of frames. I mean, it's a huge difference. All right, Far Cry from 2004. Frame rates on a stock CPU, they varied from the 20s to the 50s, but overall, playing the game, it, it felt extremely smooth. Okay, so overclocked, our frame rates went from the 80s down to the 40s sometimes during a lot of action, but it was also very playable and very smooth. Definitely a good game to play on a Pentium 4, especially if you overclocked it. I also decided to try Hitman Absolution from 2012, and that was just a no-go on the system. The in-game benchmark result was beyond terrible, and it was even worse when overclocked, so I just gave up at this point. Right, Flat Out 2 from 2006, it performed just as you would expect, pretty consistent frame times with FPS averaging around 50. Overclocked though, FPS stayed in the 70s almost the entire time, which was really nice. <laughs> 
Alright, Stalker Call of Pripyat. Believe it or not, this game came out in 2010 despite the way the graphics look. Uh, with P4 stock settings, our FPS averaged around 40. Uh, with frame times all over the place, which seems to be pretty typical for this game. Once overclocked, it, it seemed like we would have had an average of over 60 FPS, but we were having an issue that was starting to show up with our uh, uh, throttling of our VRMs. I think they were just getting too hot and starting to throttle. Um, but, you know, if we could have got a, a heat sink, if we had a VRM with a heat sink or a better motherboard and uh, was able to keep this overclock, uh, we would have averaged over 60 FPS in this game. All right, Bioshock from 2007 is next. I covered two separate scenes here. Uh, outside in the burning water, our FPS stayed above 30. And once inside, the FPS would go from the 40s down to the 20s during action. And overclocked, I mean, you know, we're, we're around 50 outside. Then we have some more throttling from the VRM. And uh, once we got to the inside, it, it was really hard to get a number. I think we were, you know, mainly in the 60s, but we just kept throttling. So... Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get a good a good reading on Bioshock, and this is with a fan blowing on the VRMs. Bloody splicer, sail Johnny M before they. Goddamn splicers! Hey, right. Tomb Raider from 2013. I didn't really have high hopes for this CPU in this game. So I just used the in-game benchmark here as well. And uh, this little P4 surprised me here. We averaged almost 30 FPS stock and when overclocked, over 30 FPS. So that was uh, pretty respectable from a P4. And last but not least, we have Crisis from 2007. And I realized Crisis was, uh, you know, Crisis was designed for after net, net burst architecture. It was for the Core 2 Duo era, and you can definitely tell. I don't know why I thought it would actually do a little bit better than it did here. In stock configuration, uh, we were in a single digits the whole time, and it was extremely unplayable. But if anything, it was consistent. So if you can say one good thing about it, which you can't. Oh, that would be it. But definitely not playable at all at 2.8 gigahertz. So what about 3.6 gigahertz? Well, once overclocked, we do see some double digits sometimes, and it really didn't help the experience at all. 
And just to show that changing a resolution here won't help at all. Uh, you see I dropped from 1080p to 800 by 600 and you see there's virtually no difference whatsoever. So in conclusion, there's really not much to say about these uh, Prescott Pentium 4s that hasn't already been said. I mean, they uh, they ran hot, and they took a lot of power, and they needed to run that uh, extremely high clock frequencies to to get any performance out of them at all due to the architecture. Meanwhile, you had the Athlon 64s just run circles around them. Uh, they were good overclockers because of the fact that they were designed to run at high frequencies. If you had a motherboard that could support it and cooling that could support it, uh, I've got a uh, Hyper T2 uh, Cooler Master on it here, which kept the CPU cool. But the motherboard I have, though it does have some limited overclocking abilities on it, uh, the VRMs just couldn't handle uh, this CPU at 3.6 gigahertz without throttling. And there's no heat sink on the on the MOSFETs, and uh, I did have a fan blowing directly on them. And it helped a little bit, but eventually, uh, in certain games, it would still throttle and basically just kill the FPS. So, next, I don't know what I'm going to do next. I've got a uh, 641, 3.2 gigahertz Prescott, but I've also got some Pentium Ds. So, I don't think, you know, even this uh, 641, even though it's got... Uh, two megabytes of L2 cache versus the one uh, that we on a chip we just looked at is going to make that much of a difference in performance. Uh, but Pentium Ds that, that should be interesting. Uh, I think what we'll do is we're going to find a pick out a Pentium D and we're going to you know just do some benchmarking with that next on the same board and then we'll move on to uh, some lower spec Core 2 duos just to see you know what we can get out of them. So I hope you guys found this interesting, and uh, as always, we'll see you guys on the next one.